Hello and welcome to the channel. Does the equation look spooky enough for the Halloween? Maybe not. That's why I put the background. In hope it will do what the equation cannot. I found this equation in the thumbnail of another video, but once I solved the equation and wanted to check the answer, the video vanished and I couldn't find it, despite my best effort. In order to comfort myself and keep the problem alive, I created this video with a subtitle Remnants of a Vanished Video. Imagine my feelings when I found the original video in the very last moment. The question was actually about finding the maximum value of x, but since I am not going to remake the whole video, it will be about finding all corresponding values of x and k, which is what I assumed by looking at the thumbnail alone. Here k might be an integer, otherwise it wouldn't make sense to me. Since the left hand side is obviously a positive number, k cannot be zero, while a negative value of k can be replaced by its opposite positive value. So let's take k to be a positive integer. Furthermore, since the right hand side is a whole number, the left hand side must be a whole number as well. The first two terms are obviously whole numbers, therefore the last term must be also a whole number. In this case, x may have 2 in the denominator, but nevertheless I assumed x to be a non-negative integer. Now as the task is set up completely, you have a chance to pause the video and try to solve it on your own. Now please welcome my solution. It can be noticed that the first two terms are even numbers. When x is 0, the last term is 1, the left hand side is an odd number and k must be odd as well. For any positive value of x, all three terms in the left hand side are even numbers, the whole left hand side is an even number and k must be even. But no matter whether a is even or odd, it can be represented as a power of 2 times an odd number. And such a representation is unique for a given k. Indeed, if k is an odd number, we must take 0 for p, in which case k will be the odd factor. In case k is even, its prime factorization contains factor 2, while all the remaining prime factors, if present, are odd numbers. In this case, we have no other choice than assuming p to be the power of factor 2, while the product of odd prime factors, if there are any in corresponding power, makes 2n plus 1. How about 2 being the only prime factor? This is not a problem at all. We take n equals 0, in which case 2n plus 1 is just 1. Now the expression for k is proven, and we can write the expression for k squared. This is also a power of 2 times an odd number, and such a representation is also unique. Let's rewrite it in a more suitable way. Here I replaced 2 to the power of 2p with 4 to the power of p and expanded the square. Would you like to continue from here? Of course you will. Let's see what we can do for the left hand side of the equation. In order to make it matching the expression for k squared, we need to factor out a power of 4. However, we can't do it straight away, because we don't know which term is the lowest one. This suggests that we have to consider two cases, when x does not exceed 27 and when x is greater than 27. Let's start with case 1, x is less or equal to 27. In this case, 4 to the power of x is the lowest term, and we factor it out. The powers are reduced by x, while the last term turns into 1. Now, if x equals 27, we have another term equal to 1, so the expression in the brackets becomes 4 to the power 1000 minus x plus 2. Since 4 to the power of x is a full square, the expression in the brackets must be also a full square. And since this expression is quite obviously an even number, 
it must be divisible by 4, whereas as we can see it gives a remainder 2 when divided by 4. Therefore in our case x must be less than 27. So the expression in the brackets is an odd number, just what we need. In order to get a complete match with the formula for k squared, we need to factor out 4 from the first and the second term in the brackets. The powers of 4 are reduced by 1, but they are still non-negative, so all the numbers are integers. So let's match the terms. Since the second term is greater than the first one, 4 to the power of 999 minus x must be n squared, while 4 to the power 26 minus x has to be n. This may happen only if 999 minus x is 2 times 26 minus x. This is a simple equation for x, which is no problem to solve. However, the result is a problem. It is negative, while x is supposed to be a non-negative integer. What a shame. But we've got an experience of dealing with that stuff. And we have another case in reserve. Case 2. x is greater than 27. The value of x can be either less or greater than 1000. However, one thing we know for sure. 4 to the power 27 is the lowest term. So let's factor it out. Now all the powers are reduced by 27. Again we have a term equal to 1. And an odd number in the brackets. Now we know what to do next. We need to factor 4 out of two terms in the brackets. But here comes a dilemma as we don't know which one to take for n and which one will be n squared. So let's consider two subcases. When x is less or equal to 1000, 4 to the power of 972 is taken as n squared, and 4 to the power of x minus 28 will be n. It means that 972 equals 2 times x minus 28, and we solve the equation for x, and get x equals 514. No upset this time, the obtained number really exceeds 27 and doesn't exceed 1000, and we need to find the value of k. So we get p equals 27, n equals 4 to the power of x minus 28. It is 4 to the power of 486. Now we can apply the formula for k, and after some simplifications, we find out that k equals 2 to the power of 1000 plus 2 to the power of 27. Here is another Halloween spooky stuff, the exact value of k, obtained from Wolfram Alpha. It has 302 decimal digits, while its binary representation will obviously have 1001 digits. Now let's copy the obtained result up and clear the page, as we have another subcase to consider. When x is greater than 1000. Now the assignments of n squared and n go in the opposite way. This gives a different equation for x. x minus 28 equals 2 times 972. Such an equation can be solved even by a primary school student. The result is 1972. I guess 1972 was the year where the problem appeared. This value of x is really greater than 1000, and the only thing remained is finding the value of k. Again, p equals 27, however, n this time equals 4 to the power of 972. And again we use the expression for k, and find that this time k equals 2 to the power of 1972 plus 
2 to the power 27. This time K has 1973 binary digits and 594 decimal digits. And again we copy the answer to the top and clear the page because now we can write the answer to the whole problem. It consists of two pairs of X and K. Now looking at the result, I can suggest a much faster way of solving the problem. This time we assume K to be 2 to the power of A plus 2 to the power of B, where A and B are non-negative integers and A is no less than B. Next we write the expression for k squared and represent it as the sum of three powers of four. Now we see that if a equals b, the value of a plus b plus one is odd. This makes a fractional power is the middle term, while all powers in the left hand side are whole numbers. Therefore a must be more than b, which means that a is no less than p plus 1. Adding a to both parts of the inequality, then dividing both parts by 2, shows that the first exponent is no less than the second exponent, so the first term is no less than the second term. Now let's get back to the inequality for a and b plus 1. This time we add b plus 1 to both parts, and again divide both parts by 2. The new inequality shows that the second term is greater than the last term. So it happened that the terms for k are listed in a non-increasing order. Believe me or not, that was the toughest part. Try to continue from here. So we have two expressions representing k as the sum of 3 powers of 4. And we only need to match the exponents. To do that, we try different matches for x, starting from the last exponent and ending with the first exponent. Attempt 1. x equals b. In this case, due to the non-increasing order of the exponents, a must be equal to 1000 and a plus b plus 1 over 2 must be equal to 27. Replacing a with 1000 and b with x gives an equation for x, giving a negative value, therefore attempt 1 is unsuccessful, and we move on to attempt 2, assuming x to be a plus b plus 1 over 2. Again a is 1000, but this time b is 27. And we can find the value of x straight away. It is 514. And finding k is not a problem either. It is 2 to the power of a plus 2 to the power of b, which is 2 to the power of 1000 plus 2 to the power of 27. And the final attempt, x equals a. b is still 27 while a plus b plus 1 over 2 is 1000. This time we replace a with x and b with 27 and find that x equals 1972. This makes a also equal to 1972, so k equals to 2 to the power of 1972 plus 2 to the power of 27. This completes the second solution. To be honest, the second way of solving doesn't look strong enough to me, leaving some questions. While I don't see anything wrong with the first way of solving. And this is the end.